John Kelly with the ties up. We're underway in his JV basketball game as Fairhaven in the dark blue uniforms with the basketball taking on MSJ. First time I've had a chance to see both teams play, so you give me a second to get settled in with the rosters. And a snowy day in 2010. Doesn't that sound strange to say 2010? Up and no finish. The offensive rebound. Fought for it on the floor and line the baseline. Kicks it back out. And Fairhaven, the Slater to the ball will drive, kick it out on the wing, and it's going to be out of bounds. Good effort by Parker Lamaru. Just couldn't get there. And Altabell number four. It's Drew Altabell in the backcourt with his teammate Nolan Pritchard. So Pritchard will give the ball back. This is Robertello, and they're running a little weave up top. And going to have a travel call. Yeah. I thought he got boogieing pretty good, but it will be a travel for everyone to get the basketball back. Eight minute quarters, overtime if necessary. The prelude to the varsity games, we'll have, I will have the MSJ for Haven varsity game at a later date for you on Channel 15 or at the website. If you go to pegtv.com, click Video On Demand. Well, I'll tell you, they had a man wide open underneath the basket and didn't give him the basketball. That's Graziano, who was underneath the hoop, calling for the ball, and they threw it away, and Altabell will bring it in now. This is his teammate number. Well, of course, I don't have a number 30 on the JV roster. So I will have to do some homework and figure out who he is. And another travel call and a turnover on MSJ. Fair Haven going to be seeing a little pressure in the back court is Austin Amory. Amory will get it between circles, give it off to the left side and have his teammate Hernandez with the basketball. We had no score yet in the basketball game. And going to have another travel. We have three travels, so there's Dakota Uber. Got up in the air, and we're going to have a timeout taken by Fairhaven. About a minute and a half into the contest. They just kind of want to get settled in here and get on the same page with each other. And yeah, that's a Fairhaven timeout. As Hernandez will pick up defensively just on the arc. And and I don't know who number 30 is. You know the strangest part is I went to the official scorebook at the scores table and copied every name and number for both teams. And I had no 30 for MSJ on my, in that book. So I don't know where he came from or how he's even legal, but he's out there. Raven again, get the ball inside. Graziano will be a little bit off the mark on his shot and some bumping and pounding down inside. And we're going to have a jump ball call. It. Amory that tied up. The shot taken by Matt Graziano. And MSJ will have the arrow going their way here in this certain situation, tied up possession situation. Again, Hernandez says it looks like a man to man type of defense. And that might have been partially blocked. And it certainly didn't make it to the hole. And Hernandez looking out of the pack with the basketball. And for Haven, it had good ball movement. And they just missed some open looks, and they missed one person wide open at the basket on the pass, but and Mache looking like they're in a zone defense, and on the spin, they're going to have another travel. That's four travels now in this first quarter of play, and actually in the first two and a half minutes of play. is Coming out for Mache will be Robertello. No, he's going to go into backcourt, so Robertello will go down to the point guard position, and I believe that was Breer. Tom Breer came and take his spot, number 14 in white. Remache, that's Breer quickly with the basketball, lining it up and front rimming it long, rebound off the long shot. And Amory going to take it right up to the hole. No. He kind of shied away from the pressure and made it a tougher shot. It had to be. It went out from Breer's foot and will be picked up by Robertello, and he'll take it on the dribble now. Work off the screen set by Altabell. Pass into the front court and Pritchard with a great effort, but it will go out of bounds. And MSJ putting a timeout. There's both sides searching for that sharpness here in the first quarter. We hand the basketball number 14, Dakota Uber. And Amory in the backcourt. So this time Amory Shea, who had shown soft pressure in the backcourt, really possessions, didn't have anybody back this time. And they are playing a zone defense, Amory Shea. It's just first quarter play. Whoops, I pass fake now. That's a three ball by Amory. He's going to be front rimming it. And Graziano came up with the basketball, and Amory will recycle the offense. Huber wants to pump it down inside, and they'll kick it back out. Again, you can see the nice crisp passing out there. They got the ball on low to Lamaru, and 
But again, not really attacking the hole. Now he is, and blocked in a foul before the shot. And for MSJ, hitting the deck was James Loveland, number 10. And Yeah, he, he's okay. Yeah, he got, I think he got a knee down in the cup area, and he's going to be up to be okay. And it does not only suck the wind out of you, it takes a, the will to lift right out of you for a second, actually, if you've never been nailed in the cup. Oh, well, it's a whole new experience. But he's okay, and he's to the sideline, and we'll see him back in the game. There is a basket, three-pointer. That'd be three, nothing. First basket came at the 433 mark. You see Hernandez on the defense there as they try to get the ball down low to Altabell and Pritchard with the basketball. He surveyed the situation, saw nothing down inside he'd like. He'll be patient on this offensive set. Briere had the ball slapped away, he's able to recover it. This is just JV ball you're watching, so you hang in there. It takes a while, but it warms up and he gets better. And Graziano reached out the pass lane and knocked the ball away, but it will stay with. MSJ checking in for the Mounties now will be Greg Mercier. And yeah, he's going to bring the ball into play. Now I've heard it pronounced Mercier and Messiah. And I was told by the, the family, pronounce it either way. So I'll go with Mercier. Or Mercier, I should say. Mercier and Mercier are the two ways I've heard it pronounced. Remember last season, Dominique played for the girls' basketball team at MSJ and graduated since, but she's one of the people in the family told me either way is right and either way is wrong. And they looked inside, again, nothing happened in MSJ. Being patient, now they're only down by three, nothing scoring. There's a foul call. There's Mercier trying to get to the basketball, and that was Hunter Liebeck. Now, the Hunter, if you've got a good memory for local sports, you'll recall he... Uh, was a standout at the Castleton Village School in the Glossick Tournament. And my God, here he is up at JV level already playing basketball. I'm not sure where he went to get the ball, all on Rice Avenue. There he comes back. Yep. Yeah, there's those open alleyways down each side that uh, the ball rolls down. You might not come back from it. Past the baseline, Altabel will pick it up, swing it over the top, and it'll be held out there by the Mounties. Like I said, we've had a lot of travels called and a lot of, well, be blunt, smugly basketball early on. It's touched by Ann Agnes. He'll go baseline, and the Mounties a lot of motion. Get the ball down in the low post, up, Altabel. Yeah, you could actually hear. I could hear it. The skin slapping on the wrist. No call on the play, and it'll be very even basketball. And again, that backcourt stays the same with Hernandez, and with the basketball line with Amory, number one, Austin Amory. Tell you what, that pass got there in a hustle and a hurry out there to the middle of the floor. Got a new number out there for Fairhaven. I'll try to pick it up here. Andrew Reed. Reed had the basketball down below the free throw. He's got a three-second call now. Yeah. Reed got camped out in the paint and didn't come back out. And that is one of those deals where he caught the ball four feet from the basket. I don't know why he didn't turn around and play it. Yeah, we got a yep, we got a drip in the ceiling coming down. And John Kelly going to do a little maintenance work. And now pressure coming in the back court for Fairhaven is Hernandez and Reed. Reed will play the ball. Hernandez will. Oh, they got the ball. De Blasio's out there. So De Blasio, number five in the ball game. He snuck in on me when I didn't see him come into the game for the Mounties. Wants to go down to Altabell to post up. He'll turn, pump fake, draw the ball. Nice job. Good job by De Blasio to get the ball down on the low post. Nice job by Altabell to create a passing lane to get the ball down to him. And the pump fake got the defender in the air. And the foul will be called on Andrew Reed. That's his first personal. Each team with two fouls, piece and three nothing to score. Fairhaven's JV squad to lead. Two fifty-seven to go in the first quarter. And Altabell will get it. Yeah, so Drew Altabell would make it a three-to-one game right now. Fairhaven would lead, and Jacob Alexander at the scorers' table. He's set to come in for the Slaters. He'll miss the second one, and Lammer will chase down the rebound. 
Amory will give it back. Fernandez will swing it over and oh, see fundamental basketball. Hunter Lightback with a one-handed pass. Do it the, the old-fashioned way. Make sure you get the ball there. Deliver it with the two hands. There's Lamaru coming out of the ball game right now. And Breer coming back in the ball game for MSJ. On the drive off the glass, no good. Shot was put up by number 22, Mercier. And there's rebound by Altabell. Again, pump fake, patience, and no, it danced on the rim, went and foul. Tell you the Mounties with some good life there on the boards. Just didn't get the ball to cooperate with them. Like I said, JV ball takes a while to warm up. Amory likes that outside shot. And that's his second three. And he's missed them both. That one was long and strong. The first one was the front rim. And here comes the Mounties on the attack. They're going to take it all the way to the hole and attack. And no. See the pace picking up? I knew that would happen. Up ahead to Reed as he's going solo. Got it. 55. Five to one now for Haven's JV squad. Like in the temple picked up there. Now pick back up man to man again. And Agnes with the ball out on the edge. And going to put it up and got it. Well, they left that Agnes alone in the big man. Nick and Agnes. To make it a 5-4 game. Inside and got it. Good push down the floor. And they took advantage. See that time he's the same thing. He's four feet from the basket. But this time he took the shot. There's Greer and Robertello coming in the ball game for MSJ. And we got some changes here on the fly for MSJ. Robertello, Pritchard, Breer, and Agnes, and Altabell out there for the Mounties. And Hernandez with the basketball going to be handed to him here in a second. Number 24 will look to get it into play. He'll have it come to Amory. Up and no. Weak side rebounds, Pritchard. Pritchard looking for the push, got fouled on the drive by Liebeck. And Liebeck will pick up the foul. Adam Mackey, number 30, coming in the ballgame now. So Mackey, number 30, in the ballgame for Fairhaven. And, yeah, I'm waiting to see who came out. So Liebeck came out with those two personal fouls. So he picked up his second foul, Liebeck, didn't he? Took him out of the game to... Yeah, you went over Minsk can see that's just learning curves here at the uh, JV at the JV level, but you gotta know you are on the court. So on the turnover, for Aben will reassume possession up by 3.7 to 4. Took almost four minutes for the game's first basket to be scored, so they've really turned it on here. Both teams have in the last couple of minutes. And JV ball is extremely rough at times, unpolished. But it's always extremely entertaining, and the players all work hard like that right there. Jump ball. Wow, as Amory was going through the paint, I don't know who hung him out to dry, but they grabbed to hold the ball. Oh, that's pretty entertaining stuff. They're going to snap the pass around. They'll have it in the corners. Alexander, 15, had a touch on the ball. This is Amory with it. And yeah, they're going to spread it back out, run through the offense. Fernandez down inside. Oh, one extra pass and they sealed off the shot this time by Mackey. That will go up. No good. They had a better shot the first time and they kicked it back out. Mackey with the save and recovered by Amory. Nice play by Mackey. He's got a mohawk for a haircut. Made him aerodynamic as he sailed through the air to uh, make the save. 37 seconds left in the first quarter. And when you get the ball low like that, you got to take the shot. And a couple times they've got it down inside to read he's, he's kicked it back out. And I just don't know if he wherever he is on the floor, but you get the ball that low, take it to the bank and cash the check. And Agnes rolling to the hole. Oh, that's a tough angle. And there's the ball. You no doubt about it. Here, we will be a push from behind on Robertello. And Hernandez and company will get the ball on the end line. That's the first foul on Robertello. Oh, we got, okay, timeouts ahead. You can't have jewelry on when you, chains or earrings or things like that, so. That's why Mackey came out, he's gotta take his, I assume they're earrings, I gotta take his earrings out. And that's something they're supposed to know before the game starts, so he'll sit down, they brought in, I think Uber came in. Read up and got it, good shot. 
Took it, you're open, take the shot, ball tipped, it's going to go to Pritchard. That'll be the quarter, an 11 to four lead for Fairhaven and JV Ball on Long Division. Okay, so number 30 for MSA is Dewey Corlew. And this is Raish in the game right now, so they've got a couple subs in the ball game. Pritchard, give it off to Raish, he'll catch it on the baseline, dump it down to Robertello, he will Look to make the move. That's a strong move to the basket. I like that. And an almost stable type of basketball. Got travel called. As Alexander avoided the, the uh, tie-up, but he backpedaled. And that's the travel call. 11 to 4. Fairhaven with the lead there in the dark blue uniforms. You're watching Peg TV Channel 15 Sports. Munger Vision to be exact. And race. Oh, that was a good idea. They're trying to just actually had the defender in the position they wanted to slide the ball into the offensive player on the bunny shot, but. Just didn't handle the pass. On the drive, got a foul and hard to the floor of Goyamory. I believe it was called on reach, number 20. It was, that's his first personal team's fourth and since Amory was in the act of shooting, Austin will be at the line. Well, he earned him too, a couple free throws here. And James Loveland. Number 10 back in the ball game for MSJ. Remember, he left a little bit earlier when he got an elbow or a knee. He able to recover from it. And Amory in a very deep coil will come up and miss it. Rich will get the ball out to Corlew. Corlew with a quick push front court gets to the elbow and will pull back between the circles. He'll be picked up defensively by Amory. Now we're going to give the ball off on that. Far side to Briere and Briere had it picked away and Hernandez chose to take it straight onto the rim instead of being able to come on an angle right or left and use the uh, backboard. And that's a tough free or a tough layup to make. And that was a tough pass. Corlo with a good grab might have traveled. No call there, and he will get back to Pritchard and oh, to play defense now. He's number 14, Uber. And another steal. Up, foul, and travel call. <laughs> little home cooker there. And then that's Mercier coming back in the ball game for MSJ replacing Breer. Boy, look at that steal. And again, they can't get the finish. And Reed with a nice drop step. And that ball be tipped back out. Amory, a big crowd. Yeah, got two shots coming up. And Altabell after a very brief rest being sent back in the basketball game. White 10, that'll be Lublin called for the foul. I'm just trying to get one, two, three, four, yep, yeah, five. So we have five Mounties on the floor. Altabell come in on the second shot here after Amory takes it. And whoa. Robertello also coming in. So Pritchard. And Corlew coming out of the ballgame for MSJ. So let's just get it straight now. We got Raich, Loveland, Altabell, Robertello, and Mercier on the floor. That's the five Mounties on the floor. I can see Reed is out there. Uber's out there. Fernandez is out there. Amory's out there. And Alexander out there. That's, on the, that's five on the floor for Fairhaven. Altabell, got it. Tell you, it looked like a disaster at first, but the right place, right time, and they're able to turn it into some points. So, 12 to 6 for Haven's JV squad with the lead. Alexander with the basketball was looking for something down in the low post, and Reed's been a good option down in the low post as he'll draw the foul, and Altabell will be called for the blocking foul. And that's going to be the 16 foul, second on Altabell, and Reed stepping up to the line. Yes. Two shots coming up for, for Andrew Reed, number 23. He shot up and good. At that friendly second bounce off the back of the rim. Okay, so we're all set for the second shot. They made it 13 to 6. And Aldebel, good job of getting to the basketball and 
boxing down. Of course, he's a very strong individual. Race got fouled by Reed. Now, I believe that's three on Reed. Have to wait for the board to catch up. I know it's at least two, but no, it's just two, so it's his second personal foul. Team's fifth foul. Nobody's in the bonus yet. I mean, she had 16 fouls, so yeah, the next foul at the Mounties commit. Well, put for Haven at the line. Look at that. Robertello off the window and in, making it 13 to 8. So for Haven up by five right now. I know Amory got the penetration, drew the defense to him, then laid the pass out on the baseline. I think he thought Reed was going to roll to the basket, ball, but he didn't. And Graziano comes back in the ballgame along with Lamaru for Fairhaven. And then Mercier will put it up. He avoided the travel. He took the shot, kind of extended because he wanted to get called for the travel. To be saved by Robertello on a good effort, but comes to Fairhaven, and here comes Amory down the court. Gonna, oh, gonna wait, it's gonna curl back as defense had hustled back, and then I'll have Hernandez. Jim back out to play and get set, you know, get the ball off to Amory. You know. And they look for Uber to flash, he didn't become open, and Graziano got the basketball for Hernandez down to Lamaru. And, you, oh, nice setup, he just didn't get the finish. That was an excellent execution of the play, getting it down into the low post. They've rotated everybody out of that area. Raish tossed it away, and I wasn't tipped, nope. So after this timeout, it's going to be Fairhaven's basketball. They're up 13 to 8 in the second quarter playing JV ball on Hunger Vision. Fairhaven again will have the basketball, and that will be the Mache's third timeout taken here in the first half of play as Fernandez got stripped on the ball, got fouled going to the hole, and I believe that's on Robert Tello off the wings with the board. Says yes, this is the second personal foul, team seventh, but I believe there's going to be two shots coming up for Hernandez. Is Corlu at the scores table? He's set to come in for MSJ, along with the Blasio. So Robert Tello coming out with those two fouls with 5:10 to go in the third quarter. Mercy or second quarter. Mercier coming out also. That's who De Blasio is going to come in for. So it's Raish, De Blasio, Robert, I don't know, Lublin. Altabell and Coralou on the floor right now for MSJ. And Hernandez with the basket. And MSJ will go back to Coralou. And yep, just at the last second, Ray turned around, saw the pass coming to him. Ray up, and that shot blocked from behind, came back to Ray. She tips the ball around, got it up, and sat on a rim and went and dropped. Altabell fouled. Boy, good work on the boards by MSJ. Raish and Altabell kept creating a live ball after the missed shot, and that was an Altabell to the line. It's Pritchard at the scorer's table for MSJ. You have to wait till the second shot here, unless he's coming in for the shooter. Altabell will front rim it, and Pritchard coming in for Coralou. Hey, I gotta be honest with you, I've never seen such rapid changes. Substitution-wise, before. And no, nope, couldn't get either shot to drop Graziano. Called for the travel and the MSJ basketball. Good effort by Graziano. And it'll be Pritchard. But they want Briere to take the ball out. Pritchard ended up doing it and Yeah, it'll be MSJ turning it over. There was a lot of confusion on that inbounds play because they ran the wrong formation. They ran the wrong man taking the ball out of bounds. So There's a screen by Lamaru Hernandez. The back of back out. Yeah, and Coach Clifford telling him to get organized. That's good advice. Graziano, and yeah, they had the baseline flash. The ball tipped by one of the Mounties. Goes out of bounds. They're looking to get the ball to Amory. Oh, beautiful. He just didn't handle the basketball. That was a clean catch. It's an easy bunny shot. They looked for Hernandez. Very able will pull it back out now and get set up with 425 to go in the second quarter. Up and nope. Lamaru up and got it. Strong move by Lamaru. And Briere will bring it into 
Pritchard, 16 to 8, Fairhaven's JV squad lead. Pritchard open and nope, a little bit off on the shot. De Blasio will hustle back and great interception by Amory up and got it. I mean, that looked like a good save from De Blasio and then it looked like it was going to be an open play to the pass, but out of nowhere, Amory came along and made the steal. It's Mackey getting set to come back in for Fairhaven. Loveland with a hook shot, a little bit to the left. And we're shading some defensive stops right now to get some momentum back, try it on the offensive and running one hander. No, rebound comes down. And it'll be Pritchard with the basketball. He's gonna bring it up the floor himself. Long pass, he'll get it to Breer. Breer. He will wrestle the ball away once and five seconds off. He did a lot of juking and stuff like that, but really not going anywhere. Well, again, the quick substitutions continuing along here for Mercedes and Agnes back in the ball game. And the only reason I mention that is just it would be hard to get chemistry, I would think, with that quick a substitution pattern. But I don't know what the heck do I know. Out the ball with yet another good play for the Mounties, and his pass front court to Pritchard. Up and got it. Nice finish. Good pass by Altfeld. Nice finish by Pritchard. And then Liebeck calling the play out. Hunter Liebeck back in the game with the two fouls. Up and Amory no good on the drive. Mackey will get the basketball turn in. I'm not sure if it was tipped or not, but it was a flat shot. And there comes Breer into the front court. And he'll just push it down inside to Agnes. And he got it. In the low post, yeah, and he's able to use his size advantage and we're staying on a nice little run right now, down just 7, 19 to 12. Reed coming back to the scorer's table for Haven. We'll be checking in with the next opportunity for the Slaters. Lamaru, Graziano, the lie back, and got it. Great movement without the ball, a nice motion. Pritchard turned and pushed the ball quickly up the sideline. Breer actually traveled, they didn't call it. And that'll go out of bounds to MSJ. So they're going to yeah, stack two this time. They want Breer. This is what they want. They want Breer to take the ball out of bounds. And they're set. And Agnes was well covered on the play, and it's going to be intercepted by Lieback of Fairhaven. And Pritchard coming back, trying to make the steal. And Lieback. After he gets that mouthpiece back in, boy, all the players nowadays, girls and boys, play with those mouth guards, something brutal. Amory off the cut, and got it. Good movement without the ball. Puts the lead back into double digits at 23 to 12. It's Mercier and Raich getting set to come in for MSJ and Agnes for a two-point shot, no good. Followed up his own miss, will step to the hole, and I tell you, that was a strong move. Look at it, Agnes, that's great work. By an Agnes. So Nick and Agnes earned himself a couple free throws. And Mackey called for the foul for Fair Haven. That's his first personal. And that shot good. So add Corlu, Raish, and, and Agnes to the mix as they'll be coming in the ballgame. Actually, Raish coming in for the shooter. And Agnes. And Alexander coming in for Fairhaven and that shot missed and Amory will get the ball tipped to him by one of the Mountie players. 23-13, Amory behind the back and he's got Mercier on him defensively. Reed holding the ball up top. You can see Altabelle giving him a little space there. You don't get too close to him defensively because he's got foul. One and one coming up, fall on MSJ. The fall called on Corlew, got a hold call. And again, they're in a little rotation play with the pick up top and lineback was going to be open, but he got a lot of jersey grabbed on him and Corlew picking up his first fall. Team's eight, it's the one and one. And he'll get the first shot to drop. Uh, push the score now to 24-13. 
It's been hovering right around 10, 11 points, up to 12 now, yep. And Hamashe with just that minute technical, they don't give up a mini run here to Fairhaven. They want to close strong and keep the game within reach starting in the third quarter. Coralou will give the ball back to Briere. He'll wrap the pass down to Altabelle. He'll fake and that's partially blocked. Raish came up with a tip ball. Muscle is up, no good. And Alexander ends up with the basketball. There's a long pass up ahead to Amory. He's up behind the defense. Fakes up off the window, no good. And Ball on Mackey, pushed from behind, and that's the seventh foul. I think that's the one-on-one -on -one now for MSJ. Second foul on Mackey. And we'll walk it down the other, and we'll get set. I just don't know if she always was shooting. It's going to be Altavelle taking the shots. So Drew Altavelle with a chance here from the free throw line. And Altavelle. Got it. They get a second chance here to cut the lead to 10. And he will get it. Have a flat free throw shot, but they did the job as they got in there. 46 seconds to go in the half, and it's 25 15, Fairhaven. Mercier. Hustling back defensively, and tough shot, almost went. Mercier will tap the ball back to Mackey, high off the window, no good. Another chance, Reed will get it. Yeah, you just can't give up that many offensive rebounds without something bad happening eventually. And Grahaven just relentless on the boards right there. That Coralou. Wanted to penetrate and clock down to 13, and leave the ball up here for Briere. And that could have been an offensive foul. Briere leaned in with the elbow to clear out Mackey. Back to Briere. Three seconds, two seconds. And yeah, they're not going to get the shot off. Four tenths of a second. And the word from the Ferry of the Bench is obvious. No fouls here because they do have 18 fouls, 17 fouls. So that would be a shot situation, free throw situation. But with four tenths of a second, that's it. Yeah, they took the clock down way too low, but. MSJ in Fairhaven on JV Ball. The Slaters would lead 27-15. Now you can see it's going to be MSJ's basketball. Keep going here in the third quarter. Played it down by 12. They need a good start here to the third quarter. They need good camera work. There we go. I find the ball. It's turning down the iris a little bit. They're looking to go to Loveland. The ball stopped out of bounds. Robert Teller will take the ball out. Number three on the baseline for the Mounties. This will be defended by Amory, number one. Fairhaven in the dark blue with the lead. And well, it was kind of different. They had two people in the same position. For MSJ, they're able to keep possession of basketball and it'll be Robert Tello. And Robert Tello wasn't all the way inbounds yet. Yeah. And it'll be. Dakota Uber, number 14, and Amory in the backcourt. They'll bring the ball up. That oh, looks like MSJ is going to go zone right now. Looks like a 1 3 1 zone, actually. A little bit different from what I saw in that first quarter. Also, I just didn't identify it right, one or the other. Now, Fairhaven had actually moved the ball very well in that first half of play. They just missed a lot of open shots, actually, but as far as execution, they Pretty good, actually. Lamaru will get the ball back to Amory. Behind the back, and Amory wanted to go baseline. Wasn't there. Smartly pull it back out and let Hernandez get reset. So, again, they'll be patient, especially under Coach Clifford, because he hands the team over, and they get to the varsity over to Coach Prendel. They so want a patient set, and it's going to be tipped away by Loveland, and Hernandez on the run will get it to drop. Boy, that was a long possession, and it came up with two points at the end. They're going to hand the ball up top to Robertello. And very predictable play. Well, was real close to being. He caught it in the front court. His momentum carried to the back court. Pritchard with the bounce pass down to Corlew. He let the defender fly by and puts a shot up. And no. Loveland? No. Uber with the basketball. Uber. In smart play. Didn't have the numbers. Waited up Amory. Now Hernandez. That's a double bouncer down inside. They're looking for a Lamaru, and 
He can't control it, but did the next best thing. He'll tip the ball back to Amory and gets it. For Haven with the first four points here of this third quarter play. Now extend the lead to 16 at 31. 15, Fairhaven's JV squad with the lead. You see Corlew trying to work the baseline. That option taken away from him. Bring it back to Pritchard. Comes off from the screen and then to the roll to the hole and Altabell. One of the oldest plays around in basketball. It works still to perfection. And they'll take it out on the baseline as Robertello. Well, they had a Mercier at the uh, scores table and they sounded the buzzer, but they pulled him back to the bench. Richard. And it should be a foul. Yeah, Loveland reached around and grabbed him and can't do that. Yeah. Yeah, so we'll have Hernandez now. And Amory in that backcourt. Most of the time, though, it's been Hernandez running the point, and they'll get the ball back to him now as he will. Try to penetrate and that 2-3 zone closed down on top and Lamaru had the touch. Now it's all the way back to Amory. Again, you see some very patient possession times by Fairhaven. Uber from the corner with the miss and Corlu with the basketball coming out of the pack with it. Might have double dribbled, gave it up to his teammate and no. Up and got it. Out the bell with the offensive rebound and the putback. Cuts the lead back to 14. Quite a contrast in styles of play offensively. And that was Pritchard coming up from behind trying to knock the ball away. Now Robert telling Pritchard. Yeah. Not a real trap actually, but there's that running one-hander and this time it won't go. And Lamero with an athletic move almost came up with the save, but say the ball touched the wall and it'll be MSJ basketball. During the third quarter and you can always go to the website, pegtv.com. Click the video on the man and watch sports from Peg TV anywhere you want, anytime you want, on the internet. Free service and stuff like that. And Saturday afternoon starting at 4 o'clock. Our games of the week, they start at 4 o'clock Saturday afternoon and play at 8 o'clock Sunday morning. And you can catch up on all the local sports that way also. As Ann Magnus will just set, be checking in next for MSJ. Along with Mercier. Amory open and got it. Three pointer for Amory. And that's the largest lead of the ball game now. 17 34, 17 for Haven. Robertello got bumped on the baseline and Kyle Traveler. That was solid defense by Fair Haven. As Reed and Alexander coming in for the Slaters now. And Loveland had picked up a, a third foul also in that earlier sequence. You can see him reverse that ball on the perimeter against that zone defense. Then it creates a little scene and try to push it inside and Pritchard will retrieve the basketball and get under control. Get organized and drop foul. Pritchard being creative taking the ball inside the paint. That'll be Reed called for his third foul. That will bring Liebeck, number three, to the scores table. He'll be coming next for Fairhaven. And boy, they need to start tacking on some points here. As the mounting's still below 20 point total. With 17 points in two and a half quarters of play. Now Liebeck coming in for Amory, actually. And they're going to leave Reed in with the three fouls. So Pritchard, a long pre-shot ritual. And we'll miss it. And he didn't sight the basket, but just before he shot, that's kind of different. Most people like to zero in on the basket as their target. You can see for having that quick perimeter passing. There it is, open the seam. That's a couple of times they had the seam open and Reed just hasn't handled the pass, but pushed down inside. 
And there they go baseline now. Alexander to read up and somebody tipped the ball. They kind of threw a shot off and Agnes with the rebound. And he'll pivot a couple times and his outlet pass tip but picked up by Robertello. Robertello now. Going to take it all the way up, got fouled. Good job of attacking the basket by Robertello. Alexander will pick up the foul. Now it's just a matter of shots. Yeah, Robertello will get a couple free throws. Again, that's a nice job of attacking the bucket. There's Briere at the scorer's table. It looks like he's getting set to come in for MSJ. And he will replace Pritchard. So Pritchard's going to get a breather at 257 on the play mark in the third quarter. And I'll tell you what, Robertello using the glass to bank it in. Well, they need some defensive stops down in Shade Augustine. Braven's been much sharper here executing their offense in this second half. Much more efficient, actually. Flyback got tied up, and there's Reed in the paint. Three seconds. Oh, yeah. Second time they've got him for that. And getting strong moves, though. He was able to get the basketball under control, but just couldn't get out of the paint in time. There's Huber. Comes out of the ballgame at 14 for Fairhaven. Robertello, I think he was looking for Altabell to go come to the ball on that side, and Altabell cut to the outside corner and that created a turnover. Mackey, number 30, out there for Fairhaven. Well, see, one thing to learn is efficiency. When you get the ball down in there, you just need to step to the basket. Reed didn't need to do the dribble. Yeah, and you'll miss the shot there. Lucky he didn't pick up number four on a push from behind. Magnus with the rebound in the outlet pass, and Briere did not hear Liebeck coming up from behind him, and he's got a sunset kind of stuff. Oh, Coach Clifford just made me for it. He hollered out, don't put the ball on the floor next time, you're wasting too much time. That's just what I was talking about. Fishes, catch the ball down in the low blocks, go right up with it. That dribble, lets the defense get up there and get in position. Altabell with the miss. And Agnes with the miss, and Agnes with the putback, no good. And Altabell will finally get it. That's just good work on the boards by Ann Agnes and Altabell. Makes it a 34-21 game now for Haven's lead down to 13. Boy, I tell you what, Reed's still in that paint. No, he'll get out this time before they call him. Mackey, we'll work it back around, put the line back up, and got it. Never brought the ball to the floor that time for the dribble. and Had a lot easier shots. The defense couldn't rotate to that side. That dribble allows the defense to rotate around and get in position. Bertello working down inside. And I think we got to hold, hold our hand jack, one or the other. Hold. Hernandez called for the hold. And Lamaru coming back in the ballgame for Alexander, for Phil Haven. Along with Amory coming in late here for Hernandez, who picked up just his second personal fall. And Burn Burton coach Seth Rice just came into the gym. He's going to be scouting out the Slaters here. As Burn Burton and Starhaven will be having games in the future. Brie Arcot shot and rebound by Lieback. Lieback head up all the way, gets the pass to Lamaru. Took a little detour, got tipped by Brie. Now Reed. Three are called for the hold now. I'm just trying to catch up. Your team fouls stand at, I thought it was three, but Ford has it as two team fouls and MSA, four on Fairhaven, and Liebeck being asked to bring the ball out of bounds. Mm, not sure. There was a discussion between the two officials and they hand the ball back, and nothing happening inside. They'll just come up top to Amory. Oh, beautiful pass. I don't think it was tipped. I just think it was offline. And they got it into Reed, and he put it up quickly. Mercier, no, Mack, you're a good athletic play. We'll get up in here and knock the ball away for the Slaters. This is MHA trying to get organized on his inbounds play. Robertello. Had a good ball game. He's played very well today, Robertello has. As has Altabell. He got the ball kicked out to Briere. Will he get the second bounce? No. Tell you what, Emichet's done something in good spur. Oh, blocked by Reed. His offensive rebounds by Emichet. They've gotten a lot of uh, more chances than I thought they would. Briere, step into the hole, will make the basket. 
35 seconds to go in the third quarter. Mackey will stand on the edge and bring the ball back to the line back quickly to Amory. And so they're just trying to open up that seam between the 2 3, top of that 2 3. We're going to start over now and put Amory between circles. 16 seconds on the score clock. They'll go down inside to Reed, and he was fouled by Altabell. Definitely two shots. Altabell now with at least three fouls, and that is his third foul. So Altabell picking up three for MSJ. And Reed going to the line. So Andrew Reed with 12.1 seconds to go with the first two free throws. And the lefty, no. That's what's Mackey, Lamaru, Reed, Amory, and Liebeck on the floor right now for Fairhaven. And he'll get that one and push his lead back to 14 and 37, 23. Yeah, I'm not really sure what the, the setup was on that play, but Ann Agnes ends up with the basketball. Might have traveled, no call. And Ann Agnes rolling to the hole, will bang it off the glass and in. Shot will count. Nope. Got a 12 point game going to the fourth quarter and the JV Slaters with the lead. The opening possession here of the fourth quarter. So you have that 12 point. They can push it as high as 17 points at one time. And MSA kind of whittled it away there late in the third quarter. And that's going to be Liebeck with the basketball and he's going to dump it down to Lamru and to Amory. And this, I can try to check the MSA players out there. I see the Blazo out there. Race is out there. Altabal with the three falls still playing. Briere and Corlu. That's the five on the floor for a machine. We've got to travel on Liebeck. So that will turn the ball over. And for Fraven, I already mentioned Liebeck, Lamaru, Amory, Mackey, and Reed. The five on the floor for Fairhaven. And Corlu. Surveying the floor and cross over. And that's Amory picking them up defensively. Fairhaven in that. In those dark blue uniforms. We're still looking for some movement on the offense. We'll come up to de Blasio. He'll put the shot up and just a little bit off the mark. They'll follow it in and play defense now against Amory now. Back off. It's going to be screened by Liebeck and he'll come into the outside of it. Now he's got 2-3 zone. It's about what their base has been playing the whole time here. There's Liebeck. Wanted to wrap the pass around. Breer had it. Had a poke for him from behind and... It's going to stay MSJ basketball. It's going to be a foul. So blue two will be Lamaru called for the foul. Then there's time in the ball game down by just 12, but they got to really find some fluid offense here, consistent offense. Coralou backing in, and Lieback came down from the top side and made the steal. Lieback all the way across to Lamaru and Amory. Briere got a hand on it and almost hit the Knocked the ball away, but recovered by the Slaters as Liebeck looked down to Reed and signed that option. Just wasn't available yet. They got to pass the ball around the perimeter, reverse the basketball, and then there's a the reversal. Mackey steps back and got it. On the weak side, he was wide open, put the ball up and in, pushes the lead back to 14, and Huber coming off the bench, number 14 for Fairhaven. And Loveland, number 10, coming off the bench for MSJ. That shot up and off the window by Corlu. Oh, I don't know if he meant to do that, but. Now let's talk about keeping the mouth guard. That's a mouth guard warning, and he has to leave the ball game because actually he's got it in his hand, not in his mouth. And that's something that they're. The officials, actually, I've heard him talk many games before about being told about enforcing that better this year. And I agree. I mean, I, I get. Tired of watching all the teams and players and different genders uh, take their mouth cards out and play with them all the time. Leave your mouth and so you come out of the ball game. And Loveland just picked up number four. With a push, shot. Yeah. Nobody's in a bonus yet, and he obviously wasn't the act of shooting, so it'll be fair even with possession fall on the baseline. And Pritchard coming in for Loveland for MSJ. Hernandez with the good grab. And Liebeck, good hands right there and a short hop pass and he'll give it off to Uber. And he looked for Reed down the paint and he flashed but wasn't open. And 
and Graziano started the ball game. Each team's really rotate a lot of people in the ball game. Reed with the finger roll, no good. And Raish had the rebound roll off from his hands, ends up in Coralou's hands. And here comes Mache on the attack, down by 14, which is 5-16 to go in the ball game. And Coralou somehow saved it and tried it to Altabell to Raish up and no. Tell you what, he got himself a good spot on the floor. He just missed the shot. And Fernandez working against. De Blasio goes right by him, up and travel call. Yeah, he was doing all right. He took that little gallop step, and then that was the end of it. There's Altabell. Waits for the sub to complete. I didn't see who came in. I know De Blasio came out. And I believe Robertello came in for him. Actually, that was the change. There's a screen set by Altabell and Coralou looking for some help. His pass goes off from the hand of Amory who jammed a finger on it and shakes it off and Fairhaven will pick up the loose basketball and Liebeck. Gets the pass off to Uber. Mercier at the uh, score table for MSJ. It's clocked down now to 4.20 to go in the basketball game. Well, a lot of these guys will make varsity next year, so you'll be familiar with them. And no matter where I go, if there's a JV game before the varsity game, I always do it. And like I said a little rough at times, but they uh, diamonds in the rough. As Uber on the pivot, we'll get the travel call, and Mercier coming in for Coralou, and it's going to be—is it going to be Altabell? Yeah, Altabell will take the ball out of bounds. Altabell's had a solid performance here for MSJ. All the way, and Pritchard stripped of the basketball, and I believe it last, yeah, it went out from him last. And it'll go out of bounds to Fairhaven. Okay, so. Mache coming out of that zone, and there's a cut on the back door, and Hernandez, nope. Well, quick to the ball, Graziano got it and got the bag. Oh, he earned that. That was a good hustle by Graziano. Yeah, nobody marked him out. Race with the screen and Pritchard to the hole. No. That was, that was a nice move. They just didn't get the finish. Robertello lost it. He was stepping to the basket, though, and that's a good thing. As Alexander, number 15, coming in for Uber. That's a fair haven switch. So down to 324 and a 14-point lead. 41-27, the JV Slaters. Up and saved to Altabell. And somebody's mouth guard's on the, uh, another. Oh, he picked it up off the floor and put it in his mouth. A lot of sneakers been on the floor and race called for the travel. At this age, there have been a lot of things I put in my mouth, and it wouldn't have been a mouth guard off a dirty floor. It wouldn't have been one of them. <laughs> but I've seen it twice now this year. And Breer getting set to come back in for MSA number 14 and white. He's at the scorer's table. Alexander's pass was deflected off of Mountie to Graziano, and off from Graziano out of bounds. And Breer going to be coming in for Robertello. That's an MSJ change. Yeah, and we're down to just 2.52 to go in this JV basketball game. Have the varsity version of MSJ Fairhaven coming up at a later date on Channel 15. And you can always see the schedule for Channel 15 in the Rutland Herald. Fall called on the shot. And two shots coming up for Pritchard. Scrawny Kelly with the call. 1-5 is Alexander called for the fall. Yeah, got the uh, paper. You can look in the paper newspaper for the listings. You can go to the website and get the listings, paytv.com. And you can also just watch the bulletin board on Channel 15. I'll put up the weekly schedule. And Mackey coming back in for Hernandez, for, M for for Haven, so Adam Mackey, number 30, in for Hernandez. Hernandez with a, a good job today out there for Fairhaven. And so Pritchard with that long pre-shot ritual. Got it. Had to wait, because that one was bouncing around, teasing the rim, and he'll get up. 
41-28, Fairhaven. Again, it's down to 13 points, but there's no indication that Mache's got the, the throttle to, to push it forward here to get back all the way back from 13 down. Mackey wanted to go down inside, nothing there this time. Mercier on the defense against Liebeck and Amory. We'll go past Briere, and just Briere right there got too close defensively, and they're able to buy him race. Long pass up ahead to Pritchard. Nope. Mercier. Nope. And again, MSJ's had some chances today with the rebound with the uh, layups that they've missed. On the other end, count it. And the basket's going to be good. And Alexander going to go to the line. Chance for the and one. Yeah, we haven't had a lot of three-point opportunities today. Shot-wise, I think there's only been two three-point shots taken from the outside, from the field. And I believe this is the first time we've had the basket made and a chance for the free throw. And nope. Out the bell, chased down the loose spot. We'll go to Raish in just a minute, 56 now. Left in his ballgame, and Agnes coming up to the scores table. He'll be coming in for MSA. Pritchard. On his way to the hole, he's working against Liebeck. Wow, it's the basketball. Went back to recover. We'll give it to Raish. He will get it. Nice job by Raish. Going hard to the hole. Getting the basket. 43-30 for Haven. And de Blasio called up to the scorer's table to join Ann Agnes for MSJ. Liebeck, Kamaki. Sets, fires, and no. Ball tipped around right in the hands of Briere. Got a two-on-two two right here in Briere. Whoops. Go back, get the ball, put it up, and no. Rebound, Mercier will get it. And we got a foul called as Pritchard came up and had a lot of arm, and he'll be called for the, the hold, and we'll get on the other end. As Altabell coming out of the ball game now, along with Pritchard. And it's not the one-on-one, it's just 16 fouls, so I got down the other end too soon. We've hit the one minute to play mark in the fourth quarter. That goes off from Breer and Graziano able to get to the basketball first. Pick back up. Liebeck will wait till the defense comes to him. That's Mercier there defensively. Alexander. Cut the ball off and Graziano to Amory. 47 seconds to go and Liebeck with the catch down low. Bring the ball all the way back out and went below the screen was Mercier. Well, Mercer moving those feet defensively like he should. Travel, that's Alexander, yeah. Stepped across, got the travel, and now he's had the ball with just 34.8 seconds to go in the basketball game. Raish, working against Mackey. A couple strong guys playing against each other right there. Rear from the baseline. Nope, can't touch it and kiss it home. Graziano doubled along the inline, gets the pass out, and they can hear the skin on skin contact. Mercer with the foul, and that's going to be the seventh team foul, and that'll be the 1-1. One 1-1, one. One one, yep. That happens with 23.7 seconds to go in the ball game, and Austin Amory, solid performance today for Coach Clifford, going to go to the free throw line. With his team up, 43-32. And so relevant, but that was Mercier's first personal foul, so the team's the seventh. And he'll get the first shot to drop. Earns him a second free throw here. And from that deep coil, he'll come up and get them both. And so Raish to Mercier, and one dribble, and he'll go back to Raish. Mackey cut him off at the top of the arc and almost came up with the steal. Great effort by Mackey. Yeah. And he obviously touched it last, so I'm sure we'll get it again here with 15.5 seconds. We're looking to get the ball in bounce as de Blasio had set the screen. They couldn't get Bria open and then brought it down low to Agnes. And with 12 seconds, Lieback with the steal. And Lieback will have the basketball quickly into the front court to Alexander. Five seconds, four seconds, and Graziano. Amory, and that's the ball game. Good effort by both schools. It's going to be Fairhaven's JV squad with a 45-32 win over MSA from the Convent Avenue gym.